So, are you ready for Dean? Ready. Give a nice big round of applause. Let's hear it for Dean Holland. Wow, what an introduction. Best uh, live up to it, I suppose. Thank you very much, anyone, first of all. Uh, like Mark was just saying, you know, really, it's quite a daunting thing, you know, to be stood up here. It's pretty much first time. Like, I uh, did a bit of a talk with Alex at um, his Las Vegas event, but it's a lot smaller thing. You know, I knew most of the people there, so it was pretty, pretty calm and relaxed. But nice to meet you all anyway. Hopefully, this is pretty cool. Hopefully, you're going to get a lot of great stuff from this. So, uh, just jump straight into it. Basically, Alex gave you a bit of a background on how, it sort of, how we sort of came about, how we met. Uh, I'm just going to go a bit, a bit more over that. But just to get started, I just want you to all know that sort of it's only about two and a half years ago when I first met Alex. And at that stage, those of you that don't know my story, I was pretty much in like a real financial mess at that point. I mean, aside from the money side of things, I've been trying for you know, a couple of years. Um, I mean, I don't know if you, any of you guys have been trying for some time, not seeing the results that you quite wanted, not seeing enough of the results. But that was pretty much where I was at. And I hadn't, didn't have any websites, no email list. You know, no blog. I hadn't even made a single dollar online. And at that time, I guess it kind of felt like I didn't have really have much hope. You know, is, I mean, is anyone here that's been trying for some time, not quite seeing the results? Yeah? So you, 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 you know exactly where I was at, you know? And it kind of, I guess you kind of start doubting yourself a little bit, you know? Is this real? Is, this, is it all a fancy? Am I being lied to? Can I do this myself? And all that sort of stuff goes through your head. And that's exactly where I was at. So what you're about to see now is how things have turned around in a very short space of time, though. And obviously, exactly how you guys can copy. So I'm just going to wet my mouth. So basically, what you're about to see, not only today but tomorrow also, is how I've been able to go from that period in my life where I had no hope, no nothing, hadn't made any money, I was in $60,000 worth of debt just two and a half years ago, to in fact now have been able to set up many multiple streams of online income, completely transform everything. In fact, one of the screenshots you're seeing on your screen there um, it's just one of the latest things that I've discovered, something that I'm going to be sharing with you tomorrow. And in fact, just in the last seven days, in fact, I took that about a day ago. It's about ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000 now in the last eight days. Um, I'm going to share with you exactly how I do this stuff tomorrow. So just, I just wanted to depict there that although it was only two and a half years ago, things were really bad, you can turn it all around in a very short period of time. And that's, you know, I'm going to share a lot of that stuff with you. Hopefully, you'll take it all away, do something with it, and make this stuff happen for yourself, okay? So just going back to where I was at that period of time, about two, two and a half years ago, I'd gone through a lot of different things. I mean, just looking at that list there, you know, I tried AdSense, pay-per-click, article marketing, pay-per-view, posting in forums constantly, solo ads, and even multi-level marketing. Um, and nothing was happening for me. You know, I kept buying these products, trying this stuff. Nothing was going anywhere. I mean, is there anyone that's tried at least one of those things on the board there? And <laughs> anyone, anyone got phenomenal results with them? And can share a lot of great stuff with me. You know, anyone want to teach me some stuff on that? Because I really failed miserably. Um, and things became really, really bad. I mean, Alex, Alex words it as like the guru's dream, but I put there sort of, I became a bit of a manic dream chaser. You know, it's just the same thing as like that guru's dream. You're buying into what you're being sold. You know, people are showing you these massive screenshots. They're telling you they're 300,000 at seven clicks of a mouse, all that, all that kind of trash, you know? And sadly, because you get into that period of desperation, it's not necessarily that you believe it, it's that, you think, what if this is the one? You know, what if, what if I don't buy this one and that was the one that could have made me that bit of money? You know, I think that's the kind of mentality. It's a bit of a trap that they get you stuck in because you spend all that money, you get yourself in a bit of a mess, then you're scared not to buy the next product in case that's the one that could get you out the mess. I mean, I see, I see a few people nodding. You know, must, that's that's where I was at. And you know, if any of you are in the same position, then you know, there's definitely light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully, that's what you're going to see today. So. I was buying product after product, literally day after day. If it wasn't every day, it was certainly every other day where I'd spend money on something else in hope that that was the one. And in fact, you know, if I'm honest with myself, I failed a lot of them products myself, I guess, because I never really stuck at them. Like, you, there's no way you could implement and, and fully give your attention to a product if you'd bought another one 48 hours later, really, you know? Um, but I was trying, you know, I thought I was the man, I thought I was doing good. And that went on for about two years. And in that period of time, um, where, where do you think it got me? You know, if you've, you've been trying that, where, do you think it got me very far? Do you think it got me good? Um, never made a single dollar in those two years. Still didn't have any kind of email list. Still didn't have a website. Um, yeah, at that time, I thought I was doing everything good. I thought, you know, this is obviously a lie because I'm doing everything right. I'm doing everything I'm told. Um, but ultimately, what I ended up in was about $60,000 of debt, you know, over £30,000. Um, 
And although time's flying by, I like to think I'm still quite young. And this, this, is, all by, this is all by like 24, 23 years old. I mean, th I mean over 30,000 pounds worth of debt. Um, family was being lied to. Like I literally was a bit embarrassed. You know, I didn't own up to, to my family. Um, this is how bad it is. I, I tried to hide it from them and carry on the life that I was living. So I mean, I had a decent paying job. You know, my, my salary at my job, you know, I, I worked hard at my job. I always tried to build up. So I had a decent salary. I'm not trying to tell you that I had a, a crap pay or anything like that. It was doing well. And be, but because of that, I felt I had to hide it even more, so I sort of carried on the life. Um, I had a partner then, you know, we, we was living happy, everything was fine. We were still going on holidays together. She had no idea, you know, and it was, it was a terrible situation because the last thing you want to do is to be lying to people you care about. But on the flip side, you know, there's that guilt factor there. You know, I've, I've been stupid, you know, what have I done? How did it get to that stage? I mean, you look back now and it's like, why did I not stop at £10,000 in debt? Why did I not stop at twenty? And, you know, it just, just scaled out of control. Um, but, you know, let's not dwell on that stuff. Then came the email. I'm sure a lot of people here, that's the subject line of an email that pretty much changed my life, I guess. Meet me in London, I'm paying. Now, has anyone seen that subject line on an email in the last couple of weeks in relation to this? Just want to show a hand? Yeah, well, you actually didn't just read the same subject line. You read the exact same email that I received from Alex in 2008, I think it was about the start of October. So what you read there was the exact same thing that made me think, right, I'm going to give this one last shot. I'm going to take him up on his offer. I'm going to go to this event. I'm going to see what it's all about. So that's what I did. You know? So it's glad that you guys have kind of followed in the exact same footsteps, I guess. Anyone seen that picture before? Yeah, on the event page? Well, that's where it all started. Um, that, I think that was about October 20th, 2008, in London, uh, actually at a hotel in Heathrow. Now, I think Alex mentioned to you that I sort of came running down. You see those stairs in the background, that stairwell there? Basically, at the top of those stairs was the seminar room. And I was sort of sat there. I was sat with Alex, sat with a few other people, um, been there for a couple of days. And Alex was sort of like, right, I'm going to have to get off, guys. Nice to meet you all. Time to go. And he came. He left that room. He came out this, down the stairs. And just sort of here on the camera is the exit out of the hotel. So there I am, some broke kid. Come running down the stairs, because I sort of didn't feel confident enough to ask him while he was sat next to me, funny enough. Um, so I let him leave, and I ran down the stairs and said, please don't go. Basically, what should I do? Tell him. Um, and that's when he said, basically, go away, start a blog, do this, do that, and get in touch with me once you've done it. And I guess he kind of thought, I'm probably not going to hear from this guy again. It's another one of those guys that tells me he's going to do something. He doesn't. Um, but I did. I actually went away and I did it. In fact, I'll show you a blog post in just a moment. We'll go online and we'll check that out, my first blog post. I actually did it the very next day. I went home from that weekend. I set up my blog. I did it the very next day. And just to show you how quick things can turn around, that was just two Christmases ago, which I suppose it's a way of wording it to make it sound closer. But, you know, 24 months, two and a half years, not a long time. You know, time's flying by, isn't it? So just want to show you, look, last year, in the last two years, sort of 18 months, been able to turn that all around, go multiple holidays, I think, Last year, I spoiled myself a little bit. In fact, I went on holiday sort of every six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. It got a bit stupid, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but I just wanted to show you, you know, that's not showing off, that's not bragging. It's just showing you how quick this can change, how quick this can happen. And you sat in literally the exact same seat that I was just two and a half years ago. So each and every one of you can do this, okay? I think you mentioned it earlier, one of Alex's sayings, don't chase money, let money chase you. Has, any, has he ever said that to anyone before? Has any of you heard him say that? Yeah, well, I'm not claiming it to be my own. That was Alex's. And basically, there's a bit of a story behind this. So I turned up at that event, and I basically, you know, I'm broke. You know, I really haven't got much money. I didn't, you know, I felt a bit embarrassed that, you know, people were going to the bar, they were buying drinks for each other. I felt a bit embarrassed the fact that I couldn't get up there and be like, you know, I'll get this rounding. So I just didn't have the money, to be honest with you. Um, so that's the kind of situation I was in. Yet you've got Alex saying to me, here's the first thing you need to do. Stop trying to make money. Uh, don't chase the money. Let the money chase you. Stop trying to make money. I'm like, what you want? <laughs> you know, what, what you want about? I want to make money. I'm broke. I thought you was going to help me out. You're telling me to stop trying to make money. You know, <laughs> whose side are you on? <laughs> um, so it took me a while to actually understand that process and what he was actually talking about. But now, obviously, you know what I've been through. I fully get what he was saying. And basically, in that period I was at, and you just saw those things like I was trying to add sense, the pay per click, all that kind of stuff. What I was basically trying to do was purely make money. I mean, I think looking back now, I even used to like spam the forums and stuff, like terrible, terrible sort of behavior, but it's that desperation really, you know? So I, I basically understood what he meant from that moment on that what I was doing wrong was I was trying to sell people stuff. Instead of saying, you know, you know, building that relationship with people, trying to provide value for people, I was saying like, oh, you want to make money? Here's a link. In fact, if you don't like that one, here's another link. Well, try that one instead, you know? And that's how I was trying to go about it, but obviously now I know that's fully wrong. And what we actually have to do now 
is build that value. You know, like Alex was talking about earlier, you know, people come to your blog, they want to read your story, they want to know a bit about you. They don't want to, you know, you don't want to come to my blog and me say, go away and buy this, bye, don't talk to me again, see you, bye. You know, you don't want that. People want to build, people want to know about you. People want to know what things you've gone wrong with, you know, things that have worked for you. Why have they worked for you? How can I follow? And that's what it's all about, providing that value. And in turn, by doing that, people want to buy from you anyway. People want to know what more you can do for them. And that's what it's all about. So it took me a while to get it. You know, I thought like shoving his comment in his face when he said, stop trying to make the money, but there we go. And basically, it almost felt like it was my last shot. You know, like I said, it was real desperation. I felt like it was my last shot. So I basically had to take the opportunity that was there. You know, I didn't know, you know, if I was going to ever get that chance again. You know, I stood with a guy, I think at the time, you know, going back two years, Alex was making like $20,000 a month or something, which was, you know, it's absolutely, it's still phenomenal now, that sort of figure, you know. But to me then, when I was, you know, looking up to him, you know, looking up to these kind of guys, like, whoa, is this really real? You know, it's a lot of money. So I had to take that opportunity. I had to take action. And basically, because it was my last shot, I sort of just exactly followed what he said. I sort of listened, I learned, I implemented. And like Alex said, after I actually went to that event and met him and I took action on setting up my blog, uh, that was when Alex opened Mar uh, Marketing with Alex 1.0, the first, the first one. So I actually joined that and started going through his coaching program. And because of that, or because of the meeting at the event, actually, my blog was born. And to those of you that have been to my blog, you're probably wondering what that is. That's what it looked like in October 2008. I struggled to find that picture, but there we go. That's what it looked like. Um, so the blog was born. And basically, like, like Alex said, you know, it was all about sharing what I was up to. And I'm going to actually go to my first blog post in a moment um, and actually go through that with you and read basically what I put and why, why I sort of worded it like that. So I'll just wait and I'll go over that. But basically, when Alex told me this stuff at the event, when I was sort of thought that was my last shot, who thinks that... I waited a while on taking action on what he said. I mean, anyone raise your hand? Did I, did I wait some time? Did I go away and do it? No, of course. I went away and I did it straight away. You know, I was desperate. I wanted to do this stuff. And basically, what I finally started to realize is if you wanted those results, if you wanted to get the stuff, then you actually got to work for it. I think I kind of, I think for a few years, I kind of thought it would just happen. Like, I always kind of had that feeling when I was sort of growing up, like, you know, I'm going to be successful. You know, I want to be a millionaire. I want to drive the Ferrari. But I never had a clue how it was going to happen. I just kind of thought, it's going to all fall into place. It's fine. Got to a certain age, I realized you actually got to do something about this if you want it to happen yourself. So, of course, yeah, I did go away, did take fast action, and I did do this stuff. So I just want to, hopefully this doesn't go wrong, but I just want to go onto the internet and just show you my first blog post. Because I think it's pretty important, especially, you know, like you guys, like I say, you just literally in that same seat that I was at this stage. So hopefully you can see it. Is that all right? Yeah. OK, so just read that to you. So wow, the journey, and if, if you just see the date, it was uh, October 20th, 2008, if everyone sees that. So basically, so wow, the journey begins. My first ever blog and why. Quite simply, I want to build a business online and I want to help others do the same. Let me explain my short story. 12 months ago, I finally realized if you want to be successful, you're going to have to work for it. Hell yeah, you will. My name is Dean Holland. I'm 24 years old and I've spent far too many years waiting for the cash to find me. Yep, guess what? It hasn't happened. I then went and said, you know, open and honest, my online earnings today is zero dollars. This is where it starts. And it's pretty cool that you can actually go back and read this stuff now, and it, you know, so it's Pretty powerful thing to have the blog. So I'm not going to read it all, but basically, so now going over the, I'm going after success with a success, uh, with passion and determination, and I know I'm going to achieve it. There you go. I've declared it live online that I'll be an online success. So let me set my first goal to earn $1 online. Do you remember what Alex was saying earlier about people have that goal? They want to make the million dollars, they want to make half a million a year or something like that. You know, there I am, $60,000 in debt, not made a dollar. And I've made that realistic goal. You know, I've come out to people, I've said, you know, I haven't made any money, I've been struggling, but I'm going to be a success online because I'm not going to stop until I basically do it. And that's what I'm going to do. So in fact, I'm going to put it publicly, I haven't made any money yet, my first goal is to make one dollar. Okay, so most people be like, why do you just want to make a dollar? You know, that I hadn't made a dollar. I'd spent two years trying to make that dollar, okay? So I just want to scroll down. Obviously, the, the blog post goes on a little bit. It talks about how I was the VIP guest of Alex Jeffries. Obviously, you've got the same opportunity right now with you guys. Um, and just to scroll down, I just want to actually show you. I think Alex, yeah, Alex was the first one to come and comment on the blog because I got hold of him. He was like, whoa, you've you actually done it. Fair enough. Um, so look, talk about taking action. Most people wouldn't have even got their blog set up in a day, let alone write their first blog post. Um, Dean, I'm proud of you. You made a statement online that, you're gonna make, that you've made $0 and you're aiming for that first $1 first. Let me tell you, dude, working with me, you're gonna make, I'm going to make sure you get out of your day job as soon as possible and make a whole lot more than a dollar. Um, 
well done, this is early days for you, and I, now, and I know you're going to make me proud. So you think meeting me as a VIP guest was worth it then? Welcome aboard, blah, blah, blah. And then I obviously went on, joined the coaching program. And don't you think it's pretty cool that you can now read that back? You can go back to that, you've got a resource, I've got something that I can show you guys. Then you, know, you, can, you can see that story, and it goes back to exactly what we were talking about, of not being pushy, not being selling, selling style with people, not being hyped up or anything. People want to see the actual story of you, the actual you know, the success, the troubles that you went through. So I think you, know, you can probably relate a lot more, and you can probably envisage exactly the steps you guys can all take to sort of make this happen for yourself as well by me showing you this. Because like I say, it's two and a half years ago, I sat exactly where you were, you know? $60,000 a debt, so it's pretty, pretty crazy stuff. So I'm just going to pull this back up. Press the magic button. Okay, so you may want to know, obviously it's all very good and well saying, you know, I was the, the broke newbie and whatever and I started a blog. But if you've ever started a blog before or you've tried any of this stuff before, you're probably wondering how you make that transition from just being someone that started a blog and you know, maybe you've even managed to get some comments on the blog and stuff, but how do you then make that transition to being someone that people listen to, someone come to for advice, someone that can actually help people? How do you go from being that complete newbie to make that transition? Obviously, you then want to start building an email list. If you want to be an online marketer, you've got to build an email list. And obviously, the aim is you want to become an online earner. You want to make a, a, an income off the internet. But it can be done in a fairly short period of time. Um, anyone want to know how? Yeah? yeah? yeah. Cool stuff. Uh, so here's basically the bullet point steps of how to make the transition. I'm just going to discuss each of these points with it. So I went away and started a blog. So maybe, yeah, take notes. I see a few people taking notes. This is the exact steps that I basically took after that seminar two years ago. Ah, excuse me. So I started the blog. And I actually made my first mistake with starting the blog. You can see that over on my blog. I, uh, anyone know about WordPress and blogs? That sort of, anyone any experience with that sort of stuff? Well, what I basically did, I don't know if you know, but WordPress.com is like a free platform for blogs where anyone can just go for free. You don't have your own hosting or anything. Um, but the downside to that being, obviously, you don't own the blog. You don't have any control over it. It could be taken down. Someone could complain, all that sort of fun stuff. Um, but I didn't realize this. That just shows you know, how little I actually knew, despite all the trying. Um, so I went away and I started my blog on WordPress.com, the free, free platform to start with. So it took me about a week or so to realize that's not how you do it. I had to get my own hosting then um, and set the blog up myself. Obviously, if you see my blog there, you know, the, the caricature, the little cartoon and everything. You know, it looks pretty fancy now, but you don't really have to be like that to start with. So if anyone's thinking, oh, oh, I couldn't do a blog like that, you can. You saw the screenshot of mine to start with. It was just a free blog, nothing fancy. But the point is the content was there and it was a place where people could come read what I was doing, start that interaction with me. So it hasn't got to be fancy, just get something up there and start it. You want to post regularly. You know, people, they're creatures of consistency. You know, people love consistency, and in fact, you know, I've been pretty poor on this myself lately, and you know, I hold my hands up to that. Um, particularly in those early stages, you want to be posting regularly. I mean, now for me, in the position my business now is, it doesn't do me any major harm if I don't end up blogging for a couple of weeks or a few months, you know, because there's other things going on, there's other things I've got to give my attention to. But you know, in those early days, my blog was one of the prime focuses, because that's pretty much all I had. You know, I didn't have a business making tens of thousands of dollars, I didn't have different income streams that I could focus my attention on. I had this one single process, like what Alex was talking about earlier, you know, the list building, the, the interaction, the relationship building, all that sort of stuff. That's all I basically had. Okay, so I had my blog, I was consistently posting, and all it was was sort of sharing what I was up to. You know, it hasn't got to be, you know, particularly if you're starting out, you may think, like, what is it that I can share? I can't teach people stuff. How am I going to end up, you know, posting content? What the heck am I going to write about? And if you've, if you've seen that, I mean, in fact, I should have probably gone over a few of my blog posts, but all I basically did was just document what it was I was doing. You know, for example, I came back from that seminar, you just read the first blog post, that was just, you know, that's how I started my blog. This is me, this is where I am, this is what I've done in the past. You know, I'm being open and honest, haven't made any money. You know, my first goal is to make a dollar. It's just being yourself, and that's all it is. You know, you just gotta be yourself. You know, you could do a blog post the next week that says, okay, now I'm learning a bit about list building, I've learned about squeeze pages. So this is what I'm now gonna try in this next week. I'll, I'll document next week, I'll do a blog post, let you know how it's going. You know, it just allows people, like take for example, if you went away and you did this tomorrow, you set up a blog, and in two weeks' time, you came back to another event, and you bumped into a whole group of people that were two weeks behind where you were at. They're, they're, they're prime people, they want to know what you're doing. You may think to yourself, all I've done is set up a blog and done a few blog posts, but I guarantee you, the people that haven't set up the blog and done a few blog posts, are probably thinking what you guys might be thinking now, you know, okay, how am I going to do this, what am I going to post about? So regardless, you know, of how little you feel that you know, or how little you feel you've got to offer, 
I guarantee you that just putting that out there, just being yourself, letting people know just what you're doing, you know, just all that stuff, just being yourself, being open, being honest. People are interested in that. That's the social environment that the internet is right now. You know, why is Facebook, Twitter, all that sort of stuff so popular? People are just interested in reading about other people. They want to know what other exper what experiences people just like them are having. And that's exactly what your blog's all about. It's a social platform for you to share this stuff with people. And it's not going to be a lot of people to start with. You've got to build up that traffic. You've got to build up the regular readership. But it will happen. You know, I can do a blog post now and have sort of 80, 90 comments, you know, if I, if I send it out to my listeners. Stuff. Before, I was getting like two or three. You know, but now, that sort of stuff happens. It's just a natural growth. And any of you can go away and do this stuff. Okay, build interaction with readers. It's another very key thing, particularly at that early stages. What I mean by that is when someone leaves you a blog comment, you don't just think to yourself, fantastic, I've got a comment. You post a comment in reply to that. You know, you can say, you know, hi Daniel, thank you very much for your comment. It's great getting to know you. Um, really take on board what you're saying, blah, 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 just an example. Um, please come back, you know, each week. I'll be posting regular content here. I'd love to hear your feedback on further things. Thank you very much. And just keep doing that because what will happen is people will come back eventually and they'll think, oh, you know, did Dean say anything about my comment? And they'll come back, oh, Dean's left a reply. Oh, thank you very much for your reply, Dean. Bam. And all of a sudden from one person, I've then got three or four comments. And it's that social thing. I think Alex touched on it earlier. If someone lands on your blog and you've got no comments and there's nothing going on at all, psychological thing of that is, oh, it can't be any good. You could have the best blog in the world with the best content ever, and if it looks like nothing's going on, you're not going to grip people on that first instance. You know, you haven't got long to grab people's attention. On the flip side of that, someone comes to your blog, you see, that you, see the late, you see the latest blog post at the top of the page, it's got like 20 comments, already it's that, oh, what's this? 20 comments, it must be good, I must read it. And it's just that little psychological thing. So by building up that interaction, not only do you develop the relationship with the people that are visiting your blog, you're also going to pull in and attract and grab the attention of new visitors to the blog. Make sense? Yep, cool stuff. Um, so then I went ahead and created a free product for the readers. I think, uh, again, Alex touched on it earlier. Basically, I continued posting on my blog, and by doing some sort of traffic generation, by going into the forums and posting, you know, and telling people, oh, I've started my blog, and doing, doing a bit of interaction myself with different people online, um, people started coming to my site, and like I just said to you, people, people could, could just be like two weeks behind where you're at, and they're prime interested in what you've just done, because you've just done it before me. Tell me what you did, let me follow, let me copy. You're obviously doing something right. How can I do that myself? And that's what happened here. People said, you know, just something simple as a blog setup guy. Dean, how did you set up your blog? You know, what mistakes did you make? Is there anything you can help me in terms of setting that up? Now, you can go on Google and just put in blog setup guy now, and there's probably a million and one free tutorials on Google, on like YouTube, there's probably a million and one guides that you can just read and pick up. Yet by people asking me that and actually put it together, just a simple guide, just walking people through how I'd done it, I had sort of, I think within a few weeks, like five, six hundred people join my list, opt in to receive that free gift. Despite the fact they could go and get it anywhere else they wanted, you know, a million and one times. The important thing I'm saying to you there is people want to read your story, people want to read what you've done with it, and that's what comes from that interaction and that consistency with your blogging. It wasn't that I was giving them the best what single piece of advice online about setting up a blog. It was people were reading my blog, they'd seen what I'd been doing by following that, and they wanted to know how they could follow in my footsteps, not necessarily the footsteps of the blog. How can I now do what you've been doing? Okay, and that's what I did. I created that free product, I built an email list, and from that email list, obviously, I was then able to develop the relationship further with the subscribers, because I had them on the email list to email out at any time. And also, of course, could then start making money as an affiliate. Okay, so built the list with the free product and I began and I began making money via email marketing. So that's essentially the steps that I took there. Obviously it then carried on. It was obviously rinse and repeat, continue posting the blog, continue you know, driving traffic to my blog, getting people to download my free report, interacting with the people that left comments on my blog. And it just sort of grew from there. And things do just grow. You, know, you might not be able to, you might be looking at those bullet points now thinking, well, you know, how the heck is that going to make me $10,000 a month or whatever, you know, whatever figures we're now able to generate from this. But you've got to start somewhere. You know, there's no point sitting there thinking, well, there's no point me doing that because I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel in doing that stuff. Everything just progresses from there. You know, if you're not making that money, you know, if you're not making that first dollar, you start like this, and things naturally begin to happen because by setting up a blog, you learn new skills yourself. By posting to your blog, you're learning new things yourself. By interacting with people, you're learning new things all the time. Okay, and this is going to allow you to step up, to try new things, to do different things. Like one of the things I'm going to be talking to you about this afternoon is sort of the continuity model. 
You know, two years ago, I didn't even really understand what that meant, let alone understand how I could make $600,000 last year with it. You know, so if you're looking at this stuff thinking, you know, that doesn't look too great to me, not too exciting, how is that going to result in anything? It does, because it's that starting post. It gets you in, you get to learn, and then things just go on and scale up from that moment on, okay? So look, this isn't difficult, is the point, okay? In fact, it's very simple. I just had to be myself, like I just spoke about with the blog. I was just being myself there. I learned from Alex, who was my mentor, and I took action. Okay, and that was the key. You know, I've had, you know, I work with several you know, coaching clients now and stuff, and they always you know, they actually end up thanking me for banging it into them. They take action. You know, it's the key single biggest thing. Like If you sit here today, take copious amounts of notes, you go away, you're probably buzzing, you're probably thinking, what a fantastic weekend. Oh, then I get sidetracked, I sit on Facebook for a bit or something, you know, and then next thing you know, something's distracted you, you've gone onto one of those $37 products again, because that could be the one, that sounds a bit more interesting than posting to my blog, so what Dean just said, I'm going to do this, okay, this stuff's very simple, you've just got to focus on it, you've just got to give it your attention, you've got to actually apply it and take action, and be consistent, like I kept saying, okay, so basically, now is your time, okay, you guys are in exactly the same position I was, and I keep saying that, but it's very, very important. Because to me, it's quite, it's quite a key thing. You know, two and a half years ago, I didn't ever envisage I'd be here. You know, I stood next to the guy that basically, essentially, gave me the advice that changed my life. But I had to take the action. And you guys are in exactly the same position now. Okay? And that's the important thing. you just got to take the action, make it happen, follow this stuff, decide what works for you, and make it happen and do it. Okay? So, nice and short and sweet, bit of an introduction. Sweating under the collar here.